Hello and welcome to this episode of News Connect on City TV. On this episode, we are asking whether Ghanaians have allowed money to influence the selection of leaders into political office. My name is Koto Achman. Stay tuned. Yeah, uh, it is something which, which has become common lately in our political affairs in this country. I see people buy their way through, through into their political uh, affairs in this country. And you realize when they come to power, little you realize they have become rich. You ask yourself, is this what politics has become or is this what education has been reduced into? We all know that politicians, uh, our legislatures, they make laws, pass bills, and amend laws. You understand? But when they want political power, they, they will tell the electorate, we will, we will build school, I will construct food. Knowing very well that is not their job. The, that job belongs to the assemblies, the MC, the municipal assemblies, the district assembly. That is their job to do these basic things for the people. But they will tell the people, they let me vote on me, I'll do this, I'll give employment. How are you going to give employment when you make laws? How are you going to give employment when you pass bills? So tell the people I represent you, instead of telling the people the real truth, they will not do it. So that is what it has become. It has be gradually, gradually, it is becoming part and parcel of our political system. Currently in Ghana, I think vote buying is like, it's everywhere. Everywhere that in such a way that it's it's you, you can't even imagine. Look, even with the even when you go to the primaries, okay, I understand that these politicians were sharing money here and there. You know, some hundred cities, some twenty cities. So you kind of imagine where are these people getting the money from? How are they able to share? Hundreds of cities to 2,000 Ghanaians. How are you going to do that? And then I think for Ga as Ghanaians, we, we, we have to be discerning in, in the extent that if any time you get this money, ask yourself, where are these people going to get the money? Tomorrow when they come to power, it is your own money they are going to steal to finance, uh, 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 this is to make them wealthy. Look. Now, if you look at our political system, you realize that every, even the, you, everybody wants to get into, the, into politics, not because of our well-being, but to make money. Politics has turned into a money-making machine. So if someone is offering you a hundred CDs, you should know that he's not just, in, um, in, he's just investing hundred CDs in you to get bigger money in somewhere. Money and its influence in our politics has become too much these days, let me put it that way. Um, I think if we, the electorates, would decide that we wouldn't wait for us to be influenced before we vote, but then we should know what we want and then make sure we also institute, um, should I say policies, to make sure we, we check our leaders and hold them accountable for whatever promise of, or hold them accountable for their responsibilities and their duties. I think... This thing will, will come to an end. That's what I think. But don't you think that um, because we also see politicians not working enough, we the delegates or electorates or um, uh, citizens say that, well, they'll come to us for their vote. Let's also make money out of them. Mm -hmm. So what if one day we the electorate all decide, okay, we will take the money all right, but then we won't vote because we don't see what we voted for being instituted or being put into place. I think it, it, has, it has to start from somewhere. It shouldn't be the, the norm that every day or any time there is um, an election, we have to be influenced before we, we, we go and vote. We should know what we want. We can limit to the politicians, but where does the thing start? It? Where does it start? It? Our kings, our chiefs, now, today, pays for them to be selected to become a chief or a king. So, 
it, it's going to become a canker for, for everybody. Because Ghana here, when something becomes common, we don't see it as a sin, as a taboo. We take it as normal, everybody. So well, what can we do to stop this? We should, we should educate ourselves that when you, you allow somebody to pay into a system or into, uh, you become slave to that person. If the person gives you money and you take it, if the person comes into the office, you cannot rebook or check the person because you have taken something from the person. So we should check from the scratch, from the ground, from the school, yeah. down. Because if the person had been polluted, knows that I paid my way from the child, I always my daddy pays, my daddy pays. When he grows, he also pays. And it's very dangerous. For that, we cannot get the people of integrity. If you don't stop that, we cannot get people of integrity from our schools to the top. What I learned was that even Ras Mubarak mm. was defeated. He came out to tell public that he, someone... This opponent used about 400 million, mm. that's 400 billion old cities mm. to win the election. Mm. So if they had this kind of money, why don't they open like companies, factories to bring unemployment down? Instead of saying, I want to go to parliament, I want to save my, my nation, I want to save my constituency. Mm. So the money used to register or to contest, because before you can contest, you need to pay some of money before you can contest and posters and things cost a lot people used to take loan so by taking loan to contest and win when he come to power as an mp and he was given he's been given let's say let's say a minister or deputy minister how do you think that such a person will, will like will do because he has a debt awaiting him so he do any ways and means to pay his debt we should be scared for what is about to come so what can we do as a country or as citizens to stop this i remember when obama came here he made mention of we need stronger institutions i think if if past and present government would do well and strengthen our institutions for us i think it will be the way forward yeah only the institutions i've had conversations with um people i mean who are lawyers some are doctors what they tell me is that what this country lacks is men of integrity. Yeah, that one is true. It is very, we lack them. We lack men of integrity in this country because the people we call honorables are not honorable because if a legislature can tell electorate that I will construct road, I will build schools, knowing very well that is not his job, then do we think we have men of integrity in the system? No. So me personally, I will side with Obama that we should strengthen our institution and we should have the power to crack the whip if somebody does wrong. If me, myself, I commit a crime and I don't go about begging people to go and talk on my behalf for me to be set free. You see, some people, uh, a petty thief will steal somebody's money and in less than a month, a month is even far, in less than two weeks, a week or two, that person is sent to jail. But look at what happens to politicians. That'll be all for this episode of News Connect on City TV. My name is Kojo Ajman. Keep watching City TV.